Greetings, beautiful people. Welcome or welcome back to Earth's Medicine, where we explore the healing wonders of Mother Earth with a Jamaican flavor. If you're new here and you like to learn about the medicinal uses of plants that are grown in Jamaica, then consider subscribing. I mean, it's totally free. And turn on your post notifications so you don't miss our next upload. In today's video, we'll be shedding some light on the medicinal uses of Jamaican Gungo Peas plant, a plant that has been used across various cultures since prehistoric times in folklore medicine to treat numerous maladies. If this sounds like something that you would be interested in, then please stick around as we uncover the therapeutic secrets hidden within this incredible botanical treasure. Gungo is the Jamaican common name for the plant that you're looking at right now. It produces pods which contain these peas and we commonly refer to them as Gungo peas. In other parts of the world, these peas are commonly referred to as pigeon peas among other common names. Scientifically, it is known as Cajanus cajun and it's a part of the legume family, which also includes peanuts, chickpeas and soybeans among many other plants. Gungo is widely cultivated in tropical and subtropical parts of the world and it has many uses. I mean, different parts of the plant are used as food, medicine, the plant has agricultural uses, it's used to make deodorant, brooms, and a variety of other things. The peas are a great source of protein and overall they have a pretty decent nutritional profile and amazing health benefits. Here in Jamaica, gungo peas usually comes into season towards the latter part of the year onto the first few weeks of the year. It's used to make a multitude of dishes here in Jamaica, but the most famous dish cooked in Jamaica with gungo peas is actually gungo rice and peas, which is a must have by Jamaicans during the Christmas season. Gungo peas plants can grow to a height of about 10 feet or so. The flowers are usually yellow, but they can also have bits of purple or red. And the pods, you know, they are flat and green in color, but they can also have streaks of purple. There can be up to eight seeds in a pod. And most of the times they're green, but they can also have other colors. The parts of the plant that are used to make medicine are the leaves seeds, roots, and young stems. According to some writers, the leaf juice has been used since time immemorial to treat different skin problems, including the ones that are found inside people's mouths. The floral decoction was used to treat things like pneumonia, coughs, menstrual disorders, dysentery, and bronchitis. The leaf decoction was used in parts of Nigeria to treat measles, Chewing on the young leaves is said to be useful for tongue boils. The roots are chewed for toothaches. The roots are also used to treat coughs and stomach problems. The leaf infusion is said to be useful for coughs and bronchitis. The boiled leaves are applied to sores and wounds and are said to promote scar formation. The leaf juice, when taken orally, is said to be useful for things like hemorrhages, coughs, and diarrhea. The flower and leaf infusion is said to be useful as a diuretic. Also the seed infusion. So taking either of them is said to make you urinate a lot. The flower and leaf infusion is also said to be useful for diabetes. In Bangladesh, there's a tribal community known as the Gara tribe and they use the leaf juice to help with diabetes. They also use the seed paste as an energy stimulant. In China, they use the leaves as a pain medicine, also to stop bleeding from wounds and to kill intestinal worms. In some parts of India, people use the leaves, seeds and young stems as a remedy for gingivitis and stomatitis, which is a type of mouth sore. In other parts of India, people place the leaf paste over mouth ulcers and inflammations. For intoxication, they give the person some fresh leaf juice to drink. This is also taken as a laxative as well. The leaves and seeds are applied as a poultice on the breasts 
of breastfeeding women to promote breast milk production. In India, people also use the plant for liver disorders. In Trinidad and Tobago, they use the leaves for constipation, colic, and food poisoning. In Oman, which is in West Asia, people use the seeds to treat a number of chronic diseases. Okay, so that's it for now, beautiful people. I hope you found value from this information and I'll see you in the next video.